Does any central bank have a convection, a conventional theory in 2022? Well, they still teach ISLM analysis and modern versions of it. But uh, central banks, of course, were not expecting this inflation. They hadn't seen inflation for a long time. They didn't know what would cause it. They had some thoughts. And I think if you're honest about the academic literature, there was tremendous uncertainty mm -hmm. about the Phillips curve, about the long run neutral rate of interest. So there's just massive uncertainty. And then you get hit by the pandemic and now the war in Ukraine, and the uncertainty is bigger than ever. It was so important here, folks, and I speak of Project Syndicate. I can't say enough as a font of wisdom led by Kenneth Rogoff, the laureate Michael Spence, and Steve Roach, many, many others. But Ken Rogoff, you write in your essay there on this synchronized global economy. How synchronized are we? How synchronized is America with China and with Europe? Well, I mean, I think the risks of having a perfect storm where Europe is in recession because of the war, China's in recession because of a failed COVID lockdown policy, and the United States because the Fed uh, tightens too much, too fast. And, or, you know, however we judge it in response to inflation. And those all feed on each other. I mean, if China has a supply recession, which is really what we're talking about, that's going to feed inflation. It's going to hurt demand in Europe. Uh, obviously, if the United States goes into recession, it hits financial markets all over the world. I, I, I would say the risks have ri risen palpably that this might happen. I, we could get, you know, things could work out well. As I said, there's a lot of uncertainty, but it's not hard to see all of these risks. I mean, I admit in China, it's hard to see what's going on, but I, I feel they might already be bordering on recession. So, Ken, do you think that already uh, that the risk has gotten too much to the Fed moving too far too fast at a time when a significant proportion of those on Wall Street think it's the opposite, that perhaps they're poised to be overly dovish and not respond enough to inflation that surprises again and again to the upside? Well, I don't think we'll know for a while what they're going to do because they can raise interest rates a lot before they raise them too much. I mean, How the much? idea at this, well, I think the idea that just to 3% would be enough is really unlikely. I think they're going to have to raise interest rates to 4 or 5% to bring inflation down to 25 or 3%. And I don't know if that is something they're going to decide to do. I'm not even saying that's something they should do. We really have to see what's going on, you know, how deep the recession is. They, they, there's, they've dug a hole, or to be precise, the huge stimulus in March, and I think a lot of the pressures on the Fed and uncertainty from academics and research has dug a hole, and it's not easy to get out of. I mean, there's no pretty picture here. Ken, let's sit on that for a minute, that you think that in order to get down to a 25 or 2 percent inflation rate, they would have to raise rates 4 or 5 percent. You don't know whether they should do that. When will we know whether they should be opting for getting back down to that kind of target at some point in the next few years? Well, I mean, you know, it depends on what's going on, what the costs are. They could get lucky. And some of the inflation turns out to be transitory enough so that uh, they get a gentle landing. It is not impossible, but there, you know, clearly a lot of things still that could go wrong. Escalation in Europe, uh, China, you know, getting worse and it's irrational COVID lockdowns. And there, there's just a lot of uncertainty. So I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna like say, I know exactly what needs to be done. But it's clear that right. things are way out of control. Ken Rogoff, you are part of our global interior confidence in the dollar. From Mundell Fleming to Jacob Frankel to your work, Maurice Opsfeld and the rest, and on, Rudy Dornbush and on, we come to a new point. Is the, is the dollar study of value now, or is it secondary to what it used to be? Oh, I think the dollar is more powerful than it ever was. And yes, central bank reserves have been diversified a bit, although a lot into currencies that are sort of pegging against the dollar. 
uh, the dollar is dominant in trade invoicing, it's dominant in uh, financial markets, it's dominant in uh, you know tra all kinds of transactions. Uh, it, it's surprising. I think it's actually by many measures more mm -hmm. dominant than it was in the 50s when it was supposed to be the global currency. Well, in the 50s, and let me digress then, Ken, this is mm -hmm. so important on Germany right now in Europe. Is Germany held back by a memory of Otmar Issing economics and such? I mean, is Germany reticent with the war in Ukraine from another time and place? Is the dollar from another time and place? I'm not quite sure what you're asking, Tom. I mean, you know, are you asking is Germany not moving more aggressively in Ukraine uh, because it's concerned about deficits? I, I don't think so. I think it's much more, you know, the concern about escalation. How much do you push Putin to push him over a cliff? I think that's actually a very tough call, and the Germans don't see it the same way that the American administration does. Yeah, I'm sorry. My question there wasn't all that clear. I fail everyone. I, I fail, Ken, when the Red Sox are in last place, so I'm failing <laughs> uh, right, right now. Ken, on Germany, then, in the euro, the challenge for Christine Lagarde, given what I'm going to call the German reticence. How difficult a moment is this for the politician Lagarde? Well, I think the toughest spot is that they seem to have connected politically raising interest rates, which they need to do, and scaling back on quantitative easing, which is a different animal in Europe. It's really a subsidy from north to south. If they start scaling back on quantitative easing, given all the fragilities, we could see spikes in interest rates in the, in the south, in Italy, in Portugal, and Spain. So they need to raise interest rates, but they've really been painted into a corner by becoming the de facto Euro Treasury, and they're backing the South. So it's a difficult political position. I think that's the most difficult part, not so much uh, navigating deficits. 